It's actually the first feature film about the life of a hand and it talks about a writer that for 30 years uh, was writing with the left hand, ignoring the right hand and he was writing very crap stories. After 30 years of being ignored, the right hand says, go to hell, I'm going to detach from the body and start writing my own stories and he becomes the most successful writer ever. So the hand becomes a successful writer. That's yes. a really yeah. cool concept. Yes. So how long did it take to like get creative with this concept? Uh, well, it started as a short film because I won a short film competition in Cannes in 2008 and I invested those money to make a short film. Then the short film was called Being Handy and the short film went to 25 festivals. So I decided to make the feature film out of it. It took me four years because I made it with no fundings, so all by myself. I had to learn to do the visual effects, the editing, then I did the writing, the directing, the photography, the set design, the costumes, it took me four years. Lainey told me when we talked on the phone that she filmed this movie in 11 days, and I'm very impressed with that. I need to know more about it, so tell us about that. Well, I didn't film it all by myself, but yes, yeah, so our amazing team, uh, I was the producer on it. Uh, Jason Strauss was the writer and the director. Uh, we had an amazing, amazing cast of hilarious comedians who were really talented, and they're very busy actors, and we were grateful to have them even for a day or three hours, and everybody who worked on this project uh, came in and gave us their best in a very short period of time, and they're all pros, and we're really blessed. We shot in 11 days, um, and it's it's just been an amazing experience. We've had um, all of our all of our actors have done really well since the film, and and they're all doing fantastic. Um, Keegan, who plays the principal, is now uh, on Key and Peele, and is doing great. He just was on the cover of Time magazine, and and uh, Matt Lesher was just in her with Joaquin Phoenix and Amy Adams, and he's always doing great things. And the Sklar brothers were couldn't be happier. Everybody's fantastic. They're so talented. Okay, guys, can you guys tell us a little bit about the concept of the movie or what was behind it? Or well, yeah, I mean, we originally met the writer and director at a Mets Dodgers game by chance, and uh, we just started shooting the stuff with them, sitting in the seat, and then. What do you, we're, you know, I'm a writer, what do you do? We're actors, have you wrote anything we've ever heard of? He's like, you wrote the movie Brooklyn's Finest, so we went out and raised the money, uh, let him direct it, and then we made certain that we were the lead actors in the movie. Of course. Awesome, and what, what, did you also act in the movie? We did, yeah, he and I were the stars of it. I played Jake, he plays Easton. Uh, yeah, it was quite an experience. And so. can you tell us about the characters of the movie? How, how are they? The movie's basically about two career criminals that go separate ways, kind of fall in love with the same woman, and then she doesn't know who to choose, and then maybe at the end there's a uh, surprise ending, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it's a period caper featuring Tom Sizemore, set in the 1960s. Most of it takes place in a 1958 Porsche Roadster, so it's got a very sexy car and a great backdrop with the California desert we shot out near Palm Springs. And what was the premise of the film? How did you come up with this idea and concept? I um, was working, I, my background is that I make documentary films and I've been doing that for years and I wanted to move into the narrative world and I work with a really talented writer, Nick Coles, uh, so we were talking about possibilities and I've been doing a documentary about the Magic Castle in Hollywood. <gasps> yeah, castle! very cool, right? So one of the stars of my film is Magician of the Year at the Castle many times in a row and we wanted to do something that incorporated some of his talents but in a more kind of, it's still surreal, but it's a more real world setting than a magic show. And so it kind of started from there. I'm in Tehran. I don't know if uh, people out there have seen Argo, but essentially our film is the documentary on the same situation, the Iranian hostage crisis. It details with, I think, a little bit more accuracy, so to speak, uh, what happened on the ground and how Canada and the CIA and the Foreign Service, Canadian Foreign Service, including Ken Taylor, combined to exfiltrate six American potential hostages out of a pretty dire situation. How did you find your crew to work with? Well, we can't complain. Our cameraman used to uh, bring si seven suitcases of lenses. <laughs> and when the character is in the mood to say something that we want to to pull out, he would stop everything and change the lens. So he's the best. He's the best uh, cinematographer. But we really had to work interview people for hours just because he was so into creating a beautiful picture.